The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Forgiving is tough. Forgiving is not easy. So because of the human nature that we have put on. The reason why we hold on to grudges is just because of the flesh. But I wanted us to know that the God demands from the new creation a new form of righteousness. So we can use the flesh as excuse. And then we said that... Um, See, for us to sacrifice, it is not what God is so much interested in. God is interested in the condition of our hands. And we said that we cannot be right with God unless we are right with men. And that obedience is better than sacrifice. So we're discussing the fact that the new creation is born of God. And as so far as the new creation is concerned, sin is a mistake. That God has shared his love in our hearts. That kind of the love of God that he shared in our heart is able to love the enemy and forgive those who oppress us. So we should always operate from that perspective. And then when you go to church, we are not preaching to your flesh. We are speaking to the born again spirit. So that's spirit is able to forgive. That spirit is created after God. It is a new creation. Hallelujah. Amen. So this evening I want to talk about the fact that God is interested in the condition of our heart. And He's interested in the condition of our heart rather than the offerings we give. But let me say that the born again experience is a powerful experience. It is a radical experience. Now the born again experience is a transformative experience. Now the born again experience is a supernatural experience. It is a game changer. If anyone is in Christ, the Bible says that that fellow is a new creation. New creation. The old is gone. The new concerning his life has come. Now let's start from John chapter 3. From verse 1, please. John chapter 3 from verse 1. I'll take it from the NIV. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, a member 
of the Jewish council. So this is a big, important, and well-respected person in the community. The next verse says this. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Now let's be careful of the phrase, for no one can perform the signs you are doing. Now this man is not is too big to be attracted to Jesus only because of miracles. No, he is not the kind that can be so naive. Hmm. He is a member of the Jewish council. So, it's not only about the miraculous signs, but it's about who Jesus is. Was and is what he sees about him. Who Jesus was in conduct. And then the signs and wonders is just escalating what he's seeing. Otherwise, this man will not just be attracted to Jesus because of signs and wonders. Now Jesus took great interest in what the man was trying to inquire. Now verse 3 says this. Jesus replied. Very truly I tell you no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. Now, the man didn't actually ask Jesus any question. He just said that no one can do or perform this miracle except that God be with him. So he was actually not demanding anything from Jesus. But Jesus replied, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. So Jesus is trying to say that if you want to become like me, you ought to be born again. This man stood to his ground. How can someone be born when they are old? Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. So now the conversation turns to questions and answers. Now Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Now like verses. Flesh give birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to the spirit. Now, when an unbeliever is fornicating, what do you expect from the unbeliever? What, are, what other thing are you expecting? Now, the flesh will give birth to the flesh. But not so with us. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now, so the man was talking about the signs. Then he says that if you want to be 
you, see, you, you want to be a sign yourself, you must be born again. It, so that the, the spirit will be moving you and the kind of life you'll be producing will be beyond the normal. And people will wonder, where is this wind coming from? Because the spirit has taken over and the spirit is maneuvering and leading such a man. Papa no oba Yesu in channel, no can send channel once em na yesu chreno, se wom no e bow mwa, e be to me ama wan kasa wa yen sen chreni ma de ube ye piano, e be ni pama wanse we e free e de ne kwi. Now look at Nicodemus's endless desire. How can this be? Nicodemus asks. Now Nicodemus is really asking, I want to be like you. Nicodemus tia sem nukum no se we e beden and I ho. Now let's jump to verse 14. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. It's all begins on the cross. Once you believe in the Son of Man who is lifted on the cross, greater works than even Jesus did shall we also do. Greater works. The new nature we inherit from Christ can fulfill the sermon on the mount. Brothers and sisters, no matter how difficult it seems to be to the natural man. So we said that the love of God has been shared abroad in our hearts. That is scripture. And what is written is written. Now, so when somebody offends you and you get so mad at it, remember that getting mad at the offense does not negate the fact that the love of God is in you. So what do you do? Do you give in to anger? Or you pray from who you have become. Now hold this constant. Then let's move on. God is interested in the condition of your heart than your offering. Let me just say that again. Can we view? See, he has made us a sign and a wonder to the world. All that we need to be overcome is in us. And that is love is shared abroad in the heart of the new creation. At any particular time, T, God is paying attention to what he has deposited in you. And he's very much interested in what is in your heart than what you have in your hands. Matthew chapter 5. Now this is the key reading for this evening. So I read 23 and 24. Matthew 5, 23 and 24. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and then remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and reconcile to them. Then come and offer your gifts. Very <laughs> difficult standard. Inti se wodi wa ye ye die ba aforo mu chia no na e ho wo kai se unua wo asem tia wa ja wa ye ye die aforo mu chia no enim ho na ko na woni unua no enko bom kane ansa na wa ba I'll dwell on this scripture for about two, three weeks. But today, let me begin by saying, God is always interested in the condition of your heart rather than what you have in your hands as offering. 
See, it could be a sacrifice of praise or a sacrifice of good deeds. But those don't tower above the condition of your heart. Those Hebrews chapter 13. I read 15 and 16. I read together. Yes. Hebrews 13, 15 and 16. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. And then he explains it as the fruit of lips that openly professes his name. Enti mumma yem fat no so and mo o nyanko po ye ye afo de da any anofa fa a bo a no Now verse sixteen also brings another kind of offering. Or sacrifice. And do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is pleased. So the first one was sacrifice of praise. And then the sac this one is sacrifice of good deeds. So when we are talking about worship, we are not only limiting it to the sacrifice of praise. The sacrifice of good deeds is also part of good worship. Yes. Yes. But God is supremely interested in the condition of your heart than these two sacrifices. Now Matthew 15 verse 7 and 8. Yes. Matthew 15 7 8. You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. I don't know which of the yous he's talking about. Whether you <laughs> These people now pay at these people honor me with their lips. Now, so God is saying that they are honoring me with their lips. So he he, he accepts that that is an honor, but their hearts are far from me. And so they are bringing something that God sees that this is an honor. They are coming to honor me. But the condition of their heart negates what they have with, on their lips. So say me say o man yi de wan no fafa e na di me ni na wan akoma de atwe afiri me ho ko achi chi 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 chi. So verse 9. Let's read verse 9 together. Just the first line. Ready go. They worship me in V A I N. Wo sorry me kwa. So they come with sacrifice. Their intention is to honor God. But the condition of their heart negates this. Just take that thing off. And then their worship in total becomes vain. Okay. Now verse 10. See the condition of a man's heart is more important than the offering they have to offer. No matter how big the sacrifice is. Is. No matter how big the sacrifice is. Uh, Genesis chapter 4. Verse 1. Are you here? Adam made love to his wife Eve. And she became pregnant and gave birth to Cain. She said, with the help of the Lord, I have brought forth a man. Now Adam nini yire hawa shiye mu. Na unyinseng, na owo Cain. Na okanse, eurade, wada uroma, menya uberima. Later she gave birth to his brother Abel. Now Abel kept flocks and Cain 
worked the soil. Na owuni nua Habel eka no ho na Habel ye odwanhwe fo na Cain ye okuafo. Now soon God is going to demand offering from them. En chebi o Yakobon o be frere won se won me bo afori o. Now in the course of time Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. Na e ba se enna bi a chire no Cain de efuo mu no bai be ye urade aye. Enabel also brought an offering fat portions from some of the first born of his flock the lord looked with favor on abel and his offering now habel so at the ninwan mu makan ne won a wadore no bi be mai na urade ani so habel ni na ye ye de no but on cain and his offering he did not look with favor so cain was very angry and his face was downcast and so cain ni na ye ye de no de na ni an so cain bu fu ipi na omunai then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now Cain said to his brother Abel, Let's go out to the field. While they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is your brother Abel? I don't know. He replied, Am I my brother's keeper? The Radi Bisa Cain said, And he and only a Habel war. Now I say, Minim, Minu Asuka for enemy and I. Brothers, Adofonum and sister, please lift your, your heads. Mr. Mautiso, and <laughs> look at me. Now, Shami, there was something about Cain, Yabri B. Ewo Cain, that God was not pleased with. Ah. Not his offering per se. There was something about Cain that God did not like. And because God did not like Cain, he didn't like anything from Cain. I mean, make this statement. I mean, see ways to be. I think that on the surface, everyone brought what they had. So this issue of uh, Abel's offering had to do with blood, forget. He, the other man was not a shepherd. He wasn't a goat herder. So she, he also brought what he had. But, so. The scripture separated the men from the offerings. Just them no or the nipano a jina baby and now or the one yeah yeah no so a jina chain. How did I know this? Verse 4. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. Now Habel so a de or say ne urade any so habel ne na ye ye dear no. Abel and his offering. Habel, any na ye ye dear. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. Now, so Cain, any na ye ye dear no dear, neni answer. So Cain was very angry. And unti Cain, bufui. And his face was down. Now, umunai. Now, Cain attacked his brother and killed him. And the Cain, sorry, tia ninuya, and wokund. I suspect that. He might have had issues with his brother already. This is a suspicion. Now I wasn't there. Because why should he attack his brother? And kill him. I suspect that. He might have had issues with his brother. Now, let me ask this question. What has the rejection of offering by God 
got to do with killing a brother? See, there was something about Cain himself. That was wrong. See, brothers, Cain was a wrong man. Cain, no one any papa. I therefore say that it was the state of the heart of Cain that God was not pleased with. God was not happy with him. The human being Cain. Cain Second Chronicles 16, verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord range throughout the earth to strengthen those whose, whose hearts are fully committed to him. Surveying and weighing hearts. Blessed are the pure in heart. For they shall see God. For they shall see God. Now I pray that you open your heart up to God. Now God is interested in the condition of your heart than what you offer. Either by your lips or by good deeds. And today, we have given an example in Cain. And I've said that God separated him from his offering. Now you may be a rich man. That is good. Supporting the church is okay. But what is the condition of your heart? I pray that God will help us. Now, as we go before God in prayer, now, pay attention to what God pays attention to. The condition of your heart. You see, you may, you may, you may be a pretender and try to uh, give some kind of impression. But you see, the Pharisees did it. And Jesus said, you hypocrites. I think we should rise in prayer. Now I'm praying that every member of this church of ours will be a genuine Christian. Not carriers of titles. No, but a genuine Christian. Yes, a chewing evil and lies. I watch you and who, but if you born it and in Adam, the people whose hearts God can attest to and be happy with. Nipa, when you come be who will come, then they need to know. Now, shall we lift up our hands if we can? And then I want you to go before God. Just go before God. Let's start praying. Just see a mumpai. Just see a mumpai. Just see a mumpai.